Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today I'm going to help my kids clean up their desks with a wall organizer. Today we're working on a really simple project to go with a project that I made a long time ago when I made some desks for my three boys in their room. Now each one of those desks still is in great shape, works out well, but the kids use them as shelves more than desks. So today we're going to make some shelves to put on the wall above their desks so they actually have a place to write. I made a fusion model of this so we can make some plans for you in case you want them, but I want to give you a sketch to show you kind of where we're headed. We're going to have a shelf that comes off the wall and then behind that shelf there'll be a board that's broken up into two areas. One half of it will be a sheet of metal so we can have magnets to stick things up, they can hang things, and then over here we're going to put French cleats and some really simple shelves so that they can put shallow shelves up in here to hang and show off their little toys and this and that. Now underneath this big shelf on the top I want to add a little LED strip inside here so that they can have some down light onto their work surface. The main part of this whole thing is going to be a simple mitered frame on the outside with a shelf on top of it. For that frame I got some pine one by twos. I got these primed just to go ahead and skip that step and not have to do it later on. So I'm going to go to the miter saw, cut all these down, and then we'll start putting them together. These frames are going to be mitered on the end, and the cool thing about that is that you can just measure the pieces all the way from point to point for your outside measurements, and you don't have to worry about two sides being shorter than the other two sides. It's simpler, but it's not quite as strong. So in this case, we want to put a lot of glue on these surfaces, put them in clamps to hold them at 90 degrees, and then shoot in some brad nails to kind of hold them there. Now luckily, this is not going to take any load. It's a picture frame, basically. If you're going to make something that actually carried load, you may want to look at half laps or something different for the corner joints. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. If you're like me and you love learning new things, Skillshare is the place you need to be. They've got thousands of classes on all different topics from photography and videography, marketing, productivity, and tons of other stuff. In fact, right now I'm taking a class on productivity from a guy named Thomas Frank, and I picked that class because I actually have met Thomas before. I've been on his podcast, I know the type of stuff that he teaches, and I'm sure this class is going to be very valuable. But there's tons of stuff for you to check out, and you have two months of a free premium membership if you hit the link down in the description and you can learn a lot of stuff in two months. But even after those months are over, it's extremely affordable. It's less than $10 a month to learn tons of new things. Take the chance to make this year all about learning. Hit the link down in the description and go check out Skillshare. I'm making three of these. I've got two of them finished and I want to show you how I'm going to put the third one together. Basically the frame is done but I need to put in a separator. The separator is going to give me an area to put the shelves which are going to be hanging on French cleats and then the big metal sheet. This is just going to go in place with some pocket hole screws. Now that we've got these put together, we need to put a rabbit in the back of both of these sections. There's going to be an inset panel. On this side, it's going to be covered with a piece of metal, and on this side, it's going to be covered with French cleats. The panel on the back is going to be the same. It's going to be uh, some really thin luon. It's lightweight, but it will help hold the structure and be a good backing for both of those things. Now that I've got these routed out, I would typically go back with a chisel and square off the corner so you could just drop a panel in. But I've got to make three of these and each one has two panels. So instead, we're just going to take a sheet of the Luon to the sander, round off the corner to fit, and then it'll drop right in place. I'm going to go ahead and fit these into place just to make sure that they drop in. This one's not going to get glued in yet because it's going to get a piece of sheet metal on the front of it. This side is going to get glued in place because the cleats are going to go on the front face. Now if you don't want to use sheet metal on the front side of this, if you don't have the tools to cut it or you don't want to spend the money, you could also cover the front side of this with a magnetic paint and that'll do the same job.
I'm just putting some clamps on these, not on the frame, but on the back side of this and on the inside of the rabbet. That'll make sure that it's pressed down fully for the glue to dry. We've got these frames all glued up, the panels are glued in, so next we're gonna work on the shelf, and for those, I got some stair treads. These are laminated pieces of pine, and the cool thing about them is that they're one inch thick. They do have a rounded edge that I'm gonna cut off, but having the thickness over this four foot span is gonna stop it from sagging in the middle. So we're gonna cut these down on the table saw and mount them on top. This is gonna sit right down on top of the frame and be attached. And then I took that off cut, the extra piece, took off the rounded edge, and this is gonna act as the front lip. This will go on here, and then it'll give us a place to put the LED strip underneath it so it shines down onto the desk. Now I'm gonna make some gussets to support the shelf on the sides. But actually, just figured out a problem. This was supposed to be 48 inches. And so if I line up these outside edges, and I look down here, there's a pretty big gap. And I'm not exactly sure how this happened, but my frame is bigger than it's supposed to be somehow. So I've got a little bit of a gap here that I need to fill. To do that, I'm gonna actually use the offcut left over from the outside of this piece. This is solid pine, and so what I'm gonna do is cut this down into almost a piece of veneer that's pretty thick, half the thickness of the overhang, put one on each end, and it's gonna look like edge banding, because then all the end grain on the ends will disappear, and I'll just have a little bit to fill on the outside. This is not ideal, but there is a way to problem solve it. My edge banding worked out pretty well. I gotta sand it down a little bit, but next we need to attach the front lip to this whole thing. And I'm gonna use a center finding jig. This looks fancy, this was really cheap on Amazon. I'll put a link to it with all the other tools that we use for this. But basically, you just lay it on top of the piece and then this piece flexes and makes it so that these holes are centered within your piece of wood. That way you can just drill down into these and you get a center hole. That hole is going to let me put in a dowel so I can connect the dowel to the top front lip and glue it all together, it'll be nice and strong and stay in place. Now that we've got those holes drilled, we need to make matching holes on the other piece of wood. We're gonna use these dowling centers, it's just a little point, and you drop these down into the hole that you've drilled, and then you set your piece of wood on top of it, line it up and push it down. That little point leaves a recess on the back side of your piece, and then you use that to drill the matching hole. Those screws in the back of this actually made this pretty sturdy, but once you start putting weight on the front of the shelf, it's gonna eventually start to sag. So we're gonna put in a little gusset right here. I was thinking of doing an actual solid triangle of wood, but I think it's gonna look too heavy from the sides. So instead, we're gonna do the same thing we did on the shelves in my bathroom a long time ago, and just put a single diagonal piece up here to connect this point to this point. You'll still be able to see through on the corner, and I think it will support it just fine. To make sure that these fit correctly and we don't have to mess with the measuring too much, I'm gonna use a square here, line up this scrap piece with the front edge, and then on the bottom side, just mark where it needs to be cut on both ends.
I've got all these brackets in place. I'm gonna wait for that glue to dry. And while I'm waiting on that, I'm gonna go use an angle grinder to cut out some sheet metal to fit in these pieces. Now it's time to make some cleats that are gonna go on this section to hang the shelves on. Those are gonna be put on after this entire thing is painted so that they are plywood color and the shelves will be plywood color. I'm gonna go ahead and cut them. And basically, they're just strips of plywood with a 45 degree angle on the back. Then we'll put those down and then hang the opposite angle shelf on top of them. I went ahead and made up all the different shelves and I wanted to show you this last one as I was putting it together. It's just a simple piece of pine with a little gusset on the bottom to stop it from being able to fall down. Then on the back, we're gonna take a piece of that cleat material and just glue it on so it'll drop down in the cleats. These should be plenty strong enough for the application, but I did make them really simply. In case they break or they get knocked down, I can easily make another one and put it back in place. We've got these painted, so now we're ready to put on the cleats. I'm gonna put these in just with some glue to hold them in place, and then I've cut down a one and a half inch spacer that we can sit on top of it before we put the next one. This will give us even spacing between each one of the cleats and make sure that there's enough room here for the shelf to fit down in. After I've got these all glued up, I'm gonna flip the entire thing over and drive in some screws from the backside to make sure they're even stronger. I ended up leaving some extra space here at the top so that there's a, just open space behind the shelf. You can't take the shelves too high or it won't be useful, but if you don't like the look of that extra gap, you could always add one more. I'm waiting on the glue to dry so I can screw those in place, so we'll start working on that panel. We've already got the metal cut, we've already got the wood cut, we just need to stick them together. We're going to use a spray adhesive for that. This should work just fine in this case. We've got to spray it on both pieces, let it dry just a little bit, and then stick them together. You could totally just glue these pieces in place, but I'm gonna use some glazer points. These actually go in on the backside down into the wood using this point. There's a tool that you can use called a point driver to put these in, but instead I'm just gonna use a hammer. All right, the last thing is to hang this on the wall and I want it to be nice and sturdy. I found these flush mounting brackets, it's two pieces. One goes in a stud on the wall and the other goes on the back of the piece and they slide right together. It's a nice metal on metal connection. They're nice and sturdy. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these on the back of the shelf. I've already got two of these on the wall and we'll mount it. I bought a really inexpensive kit of LED tape that we're gonna put up here so that they have a desk light, but I wanted to point out that I didn't get the ones with the remote control. Because those are not individually addressable, one remote would control all three, and since I've got three boys in here that will probably mess with each other, they each are gonna have their own local control. We're just gonna stick these up there and plug them in. Now we can drop the shelves right onto the cleats and then dress up this desk and it's done.
And here it is, all finished up. Now I specifically made this to go on top of the desk that I made for my boys a long time ago. We've got plans for both of these things on the website and they go great together. And one of the coolest things is that this entire thing can be customized. You could swap this out with cork board. You could make the whole thing taller, make the shelves deeper or more narrow. And this whole section with the cleats can be customized to fit your workspace. This is great over a desk, but it would also work in an entryway or in a shop. Whatever workspace that you need organized, this is a pretty good way to do it. Like I said before, we're gonna have plans for both of these things down in the description if you wanna check them out. And if this thing gave you some ideas for how to organize your space, I would love to hear about it in the comments below. We've got tons of other types of projects that you also may wanna check out. And if you're not subscribed, please go ahead and do that as well. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. You're dark. I'm gonna undirk you. At least we know.